Hey, welcome back. So we're still in topic two. So this is lesson two of topic two. And so um, <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and get started. So let me go ahead and <clears throat> pull up today's PowerPoint. But quickly before I do, I just wanna make sure, um, remember we had the topic one quiz. So if you're still working on that, to make sure you try to get that topic one quiz completed and get that turned into the cottage staff so it could get sent up um, to the admin building for grading because that is going to be pretty important to make sure we get your grade captured for the topic one as now we're in, into topic two. All right, so let me pull up today's PowerPoint. <clears throat> Okay, so now you should be seeing, it says let's get started exponential form lesson 205. So here's our learning targets that we're gonna be, be going through. So today we're gonna to talk about, I can understand exponents, how they are used and why they're important. I can write in exponential form, factored form and multiplied form. And I can use exponents to shorten expressions. Okay. If you want to write these down and you need time, your cottage staff, to, anytime throughout the video, you can just ask them to please pause the video. You can capture any notes um, in order to, to go on before they go on. So, All right, so <clears throat> we had talked about in the last lesson variables and expressions. And so what I want you to do now is I'm gonna give you about um, probably a third, two more, a little over a minute, is look this over, write an expression for this group of problems. So go ahead and um, if you need help, go ahead and ask your classmates, but I want you all to just go ahead. You don't have to write down the whole problem, just write down the expression that you see for this group of problems. Okay, about another 15 seconds. Okay, so what is the thing you notice about this group of problems? Well, first off, you'll notice that there's some things that always are the same. So the two outside the parentheses, so two, and then in parentheses, there's a number. In this case, it's four plus two, and the next one's two and then times parentheses five plus two. So the two on the outside always stays the same. And then the two in the parentheses always stays the same. So the variable, yeah, think about what the variable is. Okay, all right, so this is what I came up with. And you could have picked any variable. I picked the letter Z, it doesn't really matter. You can add A, B, X, anything like that. So, but it's two and then the variable, what changes because you notice this four, five, eight, and minus nine, minus 13, and 99 always changes, and then plus two. Okay, if you struggled getting that, then you're gonna wanna go back and look at the video, <clears throat> the last video where we went over, that have been topic one, I mean, topic two, lesson one. And this one here is topic two, lesson two, okay? All right, so today's lesson is what is, an exponent. So what I want you to do is on your piece of paper, I'm going to give you two minutes and I want you all to just write down what do you think the definition of an exponent is. Go ahead and talk amongst yourself. You can ask each other. You can even hey, out of fun, ask the cottage staff, see what they know, see what they remember from when they were in school. But just jot down a couple notes on what do you think a good definition of the word 
exponent is. Doesn't matter if you get it right or wrong, I just wanna see what you get. So go ahead and do that. <clears throat> You can also use examples if you want to as part of your definition. Okay, give me about another minute. About another 30 seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and see, see what I got on here. See how many of these things compare. So I had an exponent refers to the number of times a number is multiplied by itself. Okay, so it allows us to abbreviate something that otherwise would be tedious to write, i.e., in other words, i.e. means, or in other words, n multiplied seven times. So without exponents, we would write n times n times n times n times n times n times n, n, n that'd be n seven times with the exponents then we can go ahead and sh shorten that to just write an n and then this is called to the power of seven example here is two to the third power is written like this two to the third with a little three which goes up here which means it's the same way of saying two times two times two times two equals eight Okay, so if you need more time, uh, why don't you capture some of this in your notes? You don't have to get every word in your notes, but um, you can have the cottage staff go ahead and, and freeze this frame so you can kind of capture a couple of the notes on into your, into your, um, on your white piece of paper. Okay, I'm assuming we're back. So but they unpause the video. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and move on. So I think it's a kind of a good little explanation here. I wanna give you guys a little demonstration of the power of exponents. And so I want you guys to take a poll amongst yourself and the cottage staff can, can help kind of keep track of, of how you raise your hand. But so I'm offering you a job. So I'm an employer <clears throat> and I'm the boss and I'm gonna, offer each one of you a full-time job. And then I'm gonna give you $1,000 per day for 30 days, or I'm gonna give you a choice. So, or I'm gonna give you a choice of one penny on day one and double the penny each day you work for 30 days. So now, in other words, so on day one, those of you that want the $1,000, you're gonna get $1,000. For those that want the, the penny, but that's gonna double each day, you're going to get one penny on day one. And then on day two, the people that wanted the thousand dollars, you're going to get another thousand dollars. So now you're up to two thousand dollars. And those who wanted the penny are only going to get, they're going to get two pennies on the second day. So go ahead and talk amongst yourself. I'll give about 30 seconds here and see, and make a, take a little poll. And maybe somebody in the cottage staff, you want to freeze this if you want. It's up to you write on a piece of paper, kind of get an idea of what did people vote? So how many people people voted for the thousand dollars per day or took the one penny on day one and doubling that penny for 30 days?
Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, so those that took $1,000 a day for 30 days, you're gonna earn at the end of those 30 days, again, you're gonna get $30,000, that's a lot of money. So $1,000 times 30 days is $30,000, okay? Now, those that earned a penny and doubling that penny each day for 30 days. So on day one, you get one penny or one cent. Okay, on day two, you're gonna get two pennies or two cents. But watch what happens as we go to day three, four, five, six, et cetera. So as we go, you'll notice <clears throat> that by, it looks like day 21, you're now earning $1,300 a day. <clears throat> so now it's taken you 21 days to get to $1,000 and the other group had it at 1,000 on day one. But as we can see how the exponents, it keeps doubling. So at the end of 30 days, you will be earning on the 30th day, I will be paying you $5,368,709.12. Quite, quite a big difference. And so what this is showing <clears throat> is this is double, taking that one penny and doubling it for 30 days. So it'd be 1.01, .01, which is one cent times two to the 29th power, or one cent times two to the 29th. So that's 5,368. So you can see with, this is called exponential growth. And if I had a graph, it would show it's going straight up <clears throat> versus if it was the thousand dollars a day, it's called linear growth. And it's just going, it's just going constant versus exponential. If you look at my hands, it's going like this. So here's your penny, and then two, three, four, five. Next thing you know, you're going all the way, it's going straight up. Versus those that took the $1,000 a day, it's just gonna continue 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. Okay, <clears throat> so I wanna talk about writing an exponential form, factored form, and multiplied form. Okay, so in this table, you're gonna see, um, I've written down, so four squared, this is how we would write in exponential form. You'd write, that'd be four with a little two. So four, this is called four squared. So four to the second power of four squared. Factored form is four times four. So remember we had talked about factors in topic one. And then multiplied form is multiply together. So four times four equals 16. So if we continue to look down for each one of these examples, so we have um, minus six squared. So squared means it's to the second power. So minus six squared is how we would write that. Factored form would be minus six times minus six, and then minus six times minus six is 36. Then two cubed, cubed means to the third, if you think of a cube, so you've got a top, a bottom, and a height. So it's kind of three sides. So two cubed is two times two times two, or in multiplied form is eight. Minus three to the third, or minus three cubed, is minus three times minus three times minus three, which equals minus 27. And then two to the fourth power. So we have the two to the four, and you can see what's happening here. And then three to the fifth power, you can see that as well. And then four to the sixth, look how big, four to the sixth, how quickly it grows <clears throat> to 4,096. <clears throat> and then minus five to the seventh. One of the things you'll notice here is we have a negative number like this one here, you have minus three cubed and minus five to the seventh. If it's raised to the third, you're gonna end up having, when it multiplies out, you're gonna have a negative number or a negative result. So, if you want to capture some of this in your notes, you can. Um, and so I would just ask if you want to get this table in, you could ask the cottage staff to go ahead and pause the video so you have time to, to copy this down. Okay, so I'm assuming at this point that the cottage staff has unpaused the video, so we're ready to, to move on. All right, so what I want each of you to do is, um, first off, I can have the, once I'm 
done talking here, the cottage staff can go ahead and pause this so you can write this down. I want you on your piece of paper to draw this table out. So this is a, there's four columns and one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So write, make a table of four columns and six rows. And I want you to write down in the left side, these words, three squared minus five squared, four cubed minus two cubed, two to the fifth power and three to the sixth power. And then write out each one of these, how you would write that in exponential form, factored form or multiplied form. Okay, I think it's pretty clear. So um, cottage staff can go ahead and pause this until everybody gets these written into their notebooks, these to this table. Okay, I'm assuming that we're back and that COD staff has now unpaused the video. So I wanna show you <clears throat> the results of what this is. So, so check your answers against my answers and see how many of you got it right. So you have exponential form would be three to the second, three squared factors, three times three and multiplied would be nine. Minus five squared would be written like this, or minus five with a little two. Make sure the parentheses are important because you want to make sure that you're squaring the the, the minus the whole thing, the minus um, five in there. And minus five times minus five would be factored, and twenty five would be multiplied. Four cubed. You can see how that one's written. Factors four times four times four multiplied is sixty four. Two cubed is minus two to the little three. Remember cubed means to the third. Minus two times minus two times minus two multiplied to minus eight. Two to the fifth power is two to the little five. So you'd multiply two five times. Two times two times two times two times two. And the multiplied form would be 32. Three to the sixth power, you'd multiply three by itself six times, so three times three times three times three times three times three, where that's going to be 729. <clears throat> so if you got each of these right, um, go ahead and congratulate yourself. It's a really good job. If you didn't, if you missed one, see if maybe somebody sitting at your table or sitting next to you, um, maybe someone else, maybe they got it right and they can kind of hopefully explain how they got it right and maybe where you made where you made your error. So I would <clears throat> just encourage you to do that. Um, Kata staff, if you want to pause this, you can if they are still, people are still writing this down. So I think it's important to capture this into their notes. Okay, so at this point I'm thinking we probably unpause the video if it needed to be paused and we'll go ahead to the next thing. So now I wanna talk about using exponents to shorten expressions. So this is pretty one of the cool things that we can do with exponents. So if we have one, two, three, four, five A's written in a row, so A times A times A times A times A, we'd write that as A to the fifth. If we have three Z's multiplied together, it'd be Z cubed or Z to the third. AB times AB times AB would be the same as AB and in parentheses cubed. Um, X plus four, it looks like we multiplied it, by, multiplied it by itself four times. So we'd have parentheses X plus four raised to the fourth power and then five X Y to the fourth. So Y multiplied four times is five X Y to the fourth. Okay, so this, you can definitely see how this is a lot shorter way of writing something out. So instead of writing, you know, the middle one here, um, parenthesis AB, parenthesis close, parenthesis AB, parenthesis close, parenthesis AB, parenthesis close, you can just write parenthesis AB, parenthesis close to the third. It takes up a lot less space in writing these. So same thing here, if you're capturing this in your notes, if the COD staff wants to go ahead and pause the video, you can go ahead and do that while everybody gets this in their notes.
Okay, I'm assuming the video is now unpaused. Let's do a check on learning. So I want each of you <clears throat> to work on this. So write these problems down in your notes. So first one would write R, R, R equals, then T, 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 T equals, there's five of those, then X plus two, X plus two, X plus two, then seven, X, X, and then Y four times, and then U, V, U, V, this last one could be a little challenging. U, V, U, V, U, V, and U, V. So go ahead, I'll give you about, 30 seconds here to go ahead and just write these down. You don't need to solve them yet. Just write them down in your notes. Okay, hopefully everybody has them captured in their notes. Now, what I want you to do is, Kata staff, go ahead and pause this video, <clears throat> and I want each of the students to go ahead and write down their answer for how they would shorten these expressions. Okay, I'm assuming everybody has the answers. Now you've unpause the video so you're back to me so i'm going to go ahead and show you what i got for answers so the first one was three r's in a row so r times r times r could be r cubed r to the third then t times t times t times c is five times so t multiplied by itself five times would be t to the fifth x plus two multiplied by its to itself three times or x plus two to the third then seven, now if you look here, it's interesting because the seven doesn't do anything, it's just by itself, but the two X's are multiplied together, so that'd be X squared, and then you have four Y's, so each one, so that would be Y to the fourth, so seven X squared, Y to the fourth. And then this one I said would be kind of, might be a little challenge for you, but if you look, there are how many U's, you count how many U's and how many V's there are. So if you count the U's, there's one, two, three U's, so that's how you get u multiplied by three times. And then v, there's three v's, so v multiplied. So u cubed and v cubed. Okay, if you got all those right, congratulate yourselves. Um, if you missed one, you could go ahead and ask your classmate or ask um, maybe someone else there that can kind of help you explain other. You can also always call me during my office hours, which is one to one o'clock to two o'clock during the week, <clears throat> and ask me as well if you have have any questions on on any of these problems. All right, so I'm going to come back to me. <clears throat> so that completes um, lesson two of of topic two. And um, so hopefully you're able to, to follow along with that. If you do need to go back and rewatch the videos, that's why we're doing this. So it gives you an opportunity to, to relook at it to see if you missed something. Um, otherwise, we're going to go ahead and end this video for today and get started. And then I will make the new video for you for tomorrow. All right. Hopefully you guys all have, have a good day. Bye.